If you've been wondering, what is the next phase of the living room going to look like? What happened to the bookcases and books? Today is the day you're going to find out. We'll start where we left off with freshly smoothed and painted walls, talk about the function of the room, the color palette, and the overall feeling that I would like to create. Then we'll look at a few inspiration pictures, do some marketplace shopping, DIY projects, and put the room together. I will say that through this process, I have come across a piece of furniture that brought the whole room together in a way that gave it that perfectly cuddly, English snug feeling that I adore. This is my favorite furniture purchase to date, so stick around. Hi friend, I'm Rachel from the blog Stone Cottage Home, where we cultivate the art of home from our heart with our hands. And today, I would like to share with you my thoughts on the design process as we bring more of that English country style into our home on a budget. Okay, here is where we left off of phase one of our English country cottage living room makeover. Our goal is to take this cozy room and turn it into an English snug. The walls are freshly painted, smooth, crisp, and absolutely lovely. No more glittery popcorn. The two main features in this room include this beautiful brick wall, and I really think the color is what makes this room so cozy. For that reason, we have decided not to whitewash or German schmear or lime wash, just to leave it as is. We do plan to tone it down some because it is rather strong. The other feature in this room is this lovely large window seat, which allows light to just flood into this room. Both of these features we will play up as we put the room back together. My idea, that I'm really excited about. To tone down this wall is to go ahead and put in built-ins on either side of the fireplace and paint them. We will still have the lovely warmth and texture of the brick, but we will tone it down with the color of the bookcases. I have been looking for bookcases to fit this particular size and shape for several months. First of all, they can't be wider than what will fit between the wall and where the mantle would come down. Next, they will be sitting about a foot up off the ground on top of the hearth, so they have to be a certain height to not hit the ceiling. And third, this hearth is about 10 inches wide here. So these are very specific sizes and I need a pair. So <laughs> I have been looking, as I said, on Marketplace for several months before just the right pair popped up. And one last thing I want to mention before we get started. We are hoping to create, as you know, an English country style snug from this little cozy living room. Our goal is always for good, better, best. We're not going for perfect. We have a certain size budget and a certain amount of time to work with. So we're just going to do our very best and be happy with being closer to our goal than we were before. Here are a few inspiration pictures that we have picked up along the way. I love the blue tiling. I love the color choices around the fireplace and these shelf styling inspiration pictures. Something like this love seat is what I am keeping an eye out for on Marketplace. Here are a couple other pieces that would work nicely. And my favorite inspiration picture. So many elements in this room capture the quaint style and charming comfort of the English snug. 
Here are the pair of wooden bookcases that I found on Marketplace after searching for several months. They need to be sanded, primed, and painted. I decided to go with my favorite vintage green paint as inspired by this photograph. Part way through the project, we decided sturdier backings would be better. Another fun twist to the plot. We decided on a color change. These were painted in the green and installed and fully decorated in the house for several weeks before I decided I would rather have a little bit quieter color so the decor would pop more. This is just one of those instances that shows one design change at a time is sometimes best, letting the room settle which allows you to move ahead with sure and steady design decisions. This color is Universal Khaki by Sherwin-Williams. Here is another example of moving closer to our goal. Right now, we have neither time nor budget for a custom mantle, but a little elbow grease can bring us closer to the look we want. I don't know about you, but small hand-painted projects like this are so satisfying and relaxing to me. I enjoy putting on a podcast and making sure that my brush strokes are perfectly straight. For those of you who are interested, this color is Espresso Beans by Bear in a satin finish. I will link all of the paint colors below. And now for the next layer of our living room makeover, this is where it starts to get exciting. After months of searching for the proper size bookcase and then deciding on the right color and a little elbow grease getting that mantle to be a nice distinct color against the brick. I'm having fun. For those of you who are curious and frugal and love a little bit of a challenge, I sold the spindle bookcases on Marketplace for $85 and bought this pair for $80. You may have noticed before we put the bookcases in place that there were outlets behind each one, so we have run extension cords to enable us to plug in lamps on either side. Eventually, as time and budget allows, we will finish building out these bookcases to where they are anchored to the wall, they reach the ceiling and stretch all the way to the wall on either side. And I'm also considering cabinet doors across the bottom. I just love how this layer is coming together. Now that everything is in place, the paint has cured, we can put the shelves in and begin decorating. One last layer to add before we begin decorating is a window dressing to this big picture window. We have chosen bamboo blinds and here you can see Matt has already measured and installed the brackets. The curtains that came with the house were a loose weave, sort of pinch pleat, oatmeal colored fabric that fit across the window. What the camera didn't show is they were old, shredded, and every other hook across the top was missing. I have long admired the warmth and natural texture of wooden blinds, but not the price, until we came across this company called Blinds.com. This company has been fantastic to work with. We love these bamboo blinds so much now that we have them in four rooms in the house and given enough time, I will have them in every room in the house. 
Each set of blinds is custom made to fit your window out of real bamboo from a range of colors. We waited for a 30 to 40% off sale and went with Hatteras Camel for our pattern. I felt the mid-tone mottled color would go with any furniture finish. The blinds are simple to install and once the brackets are attached, a little valance hides them. Before we decorate the shelves in the Universal Khaki, here is a peek of what they looked like in the green. It's always good to evaluate what you think you like with a new option before making a final decision. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for that's the absolute most fun. Let's decorate, bring in the furniture, and watch this English country snug come to life.
And now for the final reveal. But wait, there's more. Remember how I've been searching for a high back, rolled arm, English love seat for this living room? Well, in the midst of this project, one beautiful piece showed up on Marketplace. Let's go check it out. Here we go. And now, friends, the final look at our English snug living room. I am delighted with how this area has come together. I'm so grateful for all the help from Matt with the DIY projects, moving furniture multiple times, hanging blinds, and so delighted with all the pieces that have popped up as we have put this together. The more I do projects like this, design rooms, do the DIY projects, and bring spaces together, the more convinced I am that the best rooms are the ones that come together over time. A collected room does take time, as we all know, <laughs> but giving it time to settle making a design change in the middle of a project like our bookcases from the green to the putty color is worth it in the end and it's so satisfying when you feel like your space reflects your personality and meets the needs of your family is this room finished no not quite there are still things that we would like to do a custom mantle or perhaps we'll find one that will fit on Marketplace. Finish out the built-ins. I'm already looking at samples for drapes to go on either side of our big picture window. But with this kind of progress that we've made, it helps me to have a clearer direction for the next steps that we take in this area. There is a saying you may have heard that done is better than perfect and I wholeheartedly agree and I think the way you could apply that to this type of scenario is done to a certain stage is better than perfect and worrying about having everything done and just right it's just wonderful to sit and enjoy this room where it is and to think about how the next things will affect what you've already got going do you have ongoing projects like this in your home? What kinds of things have you learned about the design process that you would like to share with the rest of us? Leave your comments below. 
Matt and I both really enjoyed this room before we started working on it, but now we both love being in this space and spend even more time together here in the evenings. Adjacent to the sofa is a half wall that has been a perfect spot for Grandpa's buffet. At my friend's suggestion, we've done a furniture shuffle, moved the buffet into the dining room, and gained extra seating here in our living room. Which brings me to the next point. Stay tuned as the dining room will be one of the next big projects that we share with you. And I must say, the transformation in the dining room is much greater and more beautiful than I imagined. I'd like to know, friends, what did you think about this next phase of our living room makeover? What were your favorite parts? What was most surprising? I just would love to hear your feedback. I still can't get over that gorgeous love seat. Not only does it make the room create a greater separation between the living room and the dining room, it's wonderfully comfortable and it was only $125. Now for those of you, myself included, who love a good before and after, let's take a quick step back in time. What a delightful visit. Thank you for waiting patiently on phase two of our living room makeover. If interior design on a budget is your cup of tea, be sure to subscribe before you go. And until next time, take care.